Hey guys, Michelle here from Cashel Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do something a little different. <laughs> we are definitely outside in my backyard and I wanted to show you how I bleach my t-shirts. Um, and if you're interested in doing something like this and that way you have an idea of my method and seeing if it works for you. So today we're gonna be using a Gildan soft style um, t-shirt. These shirts are able to have 65% polyester, which does allow you to sublimate if you're looking to sublimate as well. Um, and that's really the purpose of the t-shirts that I like to do. And then you have the 35% cotton. So cotton allows you to do the bleaching format. So you definitely want to look for a good combination depending on what you're doing. So what I get is these shirt forms from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> um, and then we're going to put the shirt through it or sorry, over it. Now this size t-shirt is an adult size large. So you're definitely gonna have to finagle it a bit. Um, here in sunny Florida, we sometimes have these little wind gusts. So what I like to use is sometimes the rocks from my garden to kind of put on the shirt sleeves. So that it doesn't fly away <coughs> excuse me and so what we're gonna do is kind of position this so we can do this now the one thing I do like to take into account is the placement of my image um, the image that I am going to be putting on my t-shirt is pretty much going to fall in line right about there. So I brought a regular copy sheet of paper, um, something that if it gets ruined is not going to break the bank. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that sort of as my template to gauge where I want the bleach to land. Um, some people use different things like I think it's flour where they take some flour and go around the area and then they know where the bleach area is um, because this is something that I'm putting in a raffle as a giveaway I'm not really too picky I really want it to be more of a random effect so that's what I'm going for so that's what we're just kind of gauging uh, mainly to make sure that the bleach area is going to be white so that way you can see my image better on this bluish t-shirt the other thing I'm going to be using is a spray bottle I picked up at the dollar store as well as Clorox bleach. So I pour a little bit in it because you don't really need that much when you're doing these bleach shirts. And of course we just got a little wind gust so my bottle almost went flying. Um, so I just pour a little bit inside and I do make sure that my animals aren't outside roaming around and getting into stuff that they're not supposed to. So I basically am just gonna put in a small amount, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bleach the area that I want to. So again, that is a thing. Oh, one more thing, the nozzle. You definitely wanna spray off your t-shirt, off to the floor or something, because you wanna make sure that the spritz Whoops. I wasn't lying, right? Um, you definitely want to make sure that the spritz you're getting or the spray you're getting from the nozzle is the right consistency, meaning you don't want it to be too wide or too narrow depending on what effect you're going for. So I'm definitely going to test that out off to the side. So I'm just going to go off here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but we'll just spray. I guess you can't really see it. So it's a very um, wide nozzle. So I'm gonna come in a little bit more. That was too closed. Okay, so it kind of gives me, let's see if I can get it. You kind of see that? I know it's very faint, but anyways, the whole point is just to make sure you're getting the area you want. So let's go back to the shirt. <laughs> And so before we lose the sun, we're just going to do the same thing. So again, I'm just gonna kind of build a perimeter. Um, definitely wanna make sure that the center right here is what's getting bleached. And again, my, my copy paper that's wanting to fly away again 
I just want to make sure that I am getting the perimeter around the image. And it is later in the day, um, so hopefully the sun does do what it needs to do. So while that is going, what I also tend to like to do is kind of give it a mist feel all the way around the um, t-shirt. And as you can see, it's kind of already lightening up. So I just do a little trinkle. I don't know if that makes any sense because you probably cannot visually see it. Hopefully you can. But I'm just doing the spray bottle very lightly. And it looks like that because I do have a wind gust, you can kind of see the spray patterns off to the side <laughs> from the wind. So I actually did more than I really wanted to. So hopefully I can um, fix that by kind of giving it some more of that effect in other places. So it's kind of like a, you know, touch and go type of thing. You definitely want to make it your own. It's kind of like an art piece in my mind. Um, not every bleach shirt is going to be identical because then it would be produced in a manufacturing. Um, and so you definitely want to just make it your own. So I'm going to let this sit here for a bit and I will come back once um, the sun has done its job and then I'll show you what it kind of looks like. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so I pretty much got to the bleaching um, option that I really wanted it to go with. I wanted to do a time lapse for you guys so you kind of see um, how it shifted. Um, I was only out here for maybe 5 to 10 minutes. Um, the sun is setting so it's my time around 6.30 p.m. in the afternoon or evening, however you want to refer to it. Typically when I do these, I usually do them um, at noon time so that the sun is really hot and there it can soak up as much of the bleach as I sprayed on it. Things I have noticed in the past when I've done them is if your area of your bleaching is still saturated, very wet, you're going to have an issue when um, you go and rinse it off. What I mean by that is that on the other side, even though we had a separation of, of the cardboard, um, would then get the saturation not as great, but you will see that um, hourglass or um, area that you did section off for the bleaching. Um, so I don't want that. So what we're going to do, and because I don't have enough time today to let it sit out here for an hour on end <laughs> to dry up, I'm just going to use some basic paper towels to kind of soak up what is there. Um, so that way I can go ahead and put it through the washer and the dryer. What I do like to do is um, rinse rinse my t-shirts before I press them. Um, I have done in the past where I've pressed them first and then bleached them, but I have noticed that the sublimation image has become more of a faded look. And by doing this method, by doing the bleach first and then the sublimation, it has been uh, more vibrant. And as you can see, my animals finally came out to play. So I'm just gonna do this real quick on this side. Again, try to soak up as much as I can. And then what I'm going to do is also flip it over because I do want to have somewhat of this effect on the other side. Not as much because nothing's going to be on the back, but I don't want it to be just plain Jane. So what I'm going to do is just flip it. Of course, there's rocks in there. So let's take those rocks out. And as you can see on some of the arms, um, the bleach did go through and that's okay. But my main thing is I don't want that huge oval here. So again, I'm just gonna take my water bottle and I'm gonna keep it on the same level of a mist and just again, just randomly. And that's enough. 
I don't want to do anymore. So what I end up doing with my leftover bleach, I don't throw it away. I don't leave it in the bottle. Um, I actually pour it back in to the bleach container that I was in. And then I do rinse this out with water um, just because I feel like you're, if you clean your tools, then it will last longer. Um, obviously bleach does ruin the products that it's not designed for, <laughs> but being $1.25 now, it's not that big of a deal, but I do want to keep it as long as I can. So I'm going to let this sit here for a few minutes and then we'll come right back. All right, well, the sun did its job, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of do the same thing. Um, just anything that has any residual um, bubbles that look like <laughs> bubbles of bleach, um, we're going to go ahead and clean that off. And it doesn't look like it's a lot. So when I flip this back over, after I threw all the rocks and everything, you can kind of see that it's still... Um, it's still saturated, but not as much. It's not soaked. And again, that's what I don't want because when I take this off of the cardboard, I don't want it to go through the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do is my washing machine does have a rinse um, cycle and it's all I'm doing. I'm not using any liquid detergent or any um, soap products i'm just gonna rinse it it's basically just to get the bleach out of it and then i'm gonna go ahead and dry it and after that process then we'll go back to my sublimation heat press and we're going to sublimate the image onto the shirt so i'll be right back hey guys so we're back um the shirt has been rinsed and dried and so we are going to put on the shirt this cute little saying that says party like it's 1776 and so what we're basically going to do is get the um, moisture out of the shirt real quick. I don't want to press it too long because then you kind of get some uh, brownish tinting. But we're just going to, well, I guess should have also checked my adjustment. Definitely want to make sure that you check your adjustment here if you've done prior um, substrates as I typically do more than just t-shirts. Um, so I'm just going to press this for five seconds, get the moisture out, and then we are going to find the center, and then we are going to press the image with um, the sublimation image that we acquired or printed. And so I just do this real quick. I do like to give at least um, three fingers length because this image is exactly um, centered in the page. I'm just going to find the center real quick by giving a little crease. And then as you can see, it has that little indentation. And then we are going to find the center. And in fact, I did not lint roll this. <laughs> I was too much in a hurry to get this done and forgot to do that. So let's just do that real quick. Even though we did press it for a few seconds, um, it is not long enough for those little fibers to come through. So um, thank God we checked that. So again, I'm just gonna give that three finger length um, gap and then I am going to um, kind of find my center. Um, with the bleaching method first kind of helps guide you. Helps guide you, sorry, I forgot to get my tape helps guide you in the sense of where to kind of place your image. And then what I like to do is just hold it up before I press it, just to make sure it is where I want it to be. Take this off. You don't want to press that with it on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up off camera just to make sure it is where I want it. And then because we are sublimating it, we are going to put butcher paper in between. And that is just this. Um, they call it butcher paper. Um, I'm sure there's other names for it. I don't remember off the top of my head what most people call them. Um, but I will put the link down below if you're interested. And this is basically just to prevent from the ink going through 
the front to the back. Um, sometimes I see it come through on the butcher paper, so I'm glad I do it. Sometimes I don't, but it's just better to be safe than sorry, in my opinion. And then once you do that, we are going to then put one on top. And that is essentially going to protect the ink from transferring to your heat pan because you don't want that to happen either. So now we're going to press it for 60 seconds. All right, so the time is almost up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift. I try to do it very slowly just so it doesn't shift anything. And then we're gonna take this off. I don't reuse them just to be safe. And then we are going to take off the image and it looks amazing now if you do have some crease lines as you do see here because the pressure might have been too hard i do take my lint roller really fast after i just pressed it and kind of like i guess release some of the fibers in the shirt doesn't always work but um i guess it's just my way of uh doing a little shimmy there with <laughs> the lint roller and then we're gonna take this off and then we're gonna head over to the table so I can show you everything together. All right, so we're back here at the table and here is my t-shirt. I think it came out super cute. Now you will probably see in the video the discoloration where this was white and then now after pressing it, it gives it that little brownish kind of look and I'll come closer so you kind of see. When I've done this with my niece's t-shirts for practice, after a while, it fades away. I do know that sometimes people use peroxide um, to get that discoloration off. I really haven't had a problem with it fading on its own. I think it's just mainly because of the heat in itself. Um, and as you can see how it all came out, and I will flip it over on the back to show you how I don't have that bleach ghosting image because I dried up as much of that bleach in the beginning um, as I explained earlier. If you don't, or it's not dry as much as it should have been in the front, when you go to rinse it, you will get that ghosting in the back. Um, and that's what I've discovered as to why that happens. It's just too saturated wherever you bleached and it wasn't dry enough before you placed it into the cycle to rinse off all the bleach from your shirt. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I hope this helps in anything that you're doing, if you're having any problems, or if you've never done this yet before and it's giving you some tidbits as to what to avoid or what to look for if you're trying it out. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And if you want to be reminded when I drop another video, definitely hit that subscribe button along with the notifications. Um, and I'll catch you on the next one. So you guys have a great day. Take care.